Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, another episode of On Finding Peace. And this is the podcast where we talk about practical daily tips to help guide us toward finding our inner peace in life. And I'm uh, very pleased and honored to have a guest today uh, coming all the way from Europe. Um, So uh, Jasmine is with us. And if you could uh, describe a bit about who you are and what you do. And then uh, we're going to jump into our topic. Sure, thank you. Thank you for having me. Welcome. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm based in London, UK. Um, funnily enough, I'm actually currently in Los Angeles. So um, that works out quite nicely. And uh, I'm a life coach. I'm based in um, personal development and transitions coaching. And basically, I empower great people to more happiness, and a lot of happiness is actually getting less stress in their life. So that's quite a big part of great people's schedules nowadays. Mm-hmm. Always have that big to-do list every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah. that's quite a big topic in there. Yeah, and, and that's the transition into what our, our topic today is. And, you know... Uh, one of the great things to have you on is, you know, so we can talk about some of your experiences and what you do, uh, you know, with your clients and, you know, maybe some of the things that you have learned as it relates to stress. As you say, all of us are stressed. I don't know who is in stress nowadays. And it, it just seems to be getting worse and worse. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so I, I guess part of it is, you know, one of the, what takes away our inner peace is the stress. Um, so we can talk a bit about that and, uh, how do you kind of define stress and, and how would you identify as to what the stress is with, uh, you know, a, a client of yours? Okay. So I think that for everyone, they kind of have a different type of stress level that they are in. So some mm-hmm. people would just get stressed out if they're standing in a queue in the supermarket. That's all. That's all it takes when they're stressed out. They're looking at their watch, looking at the iPhone, notification, email, email coming in, this, that, everything's going on. Just wanted to grab, I don't know, some water, whatever. So it was, it, it, it is, it's very different. Some people get stressed out because they have a lot on their table that they have to do or because they just think about multiple things at once. So... Mm-hmm. It really depends on the person, which it's completely understandable that you're feeling stressed out because you obviously want to perform not only in the business side, the corporate side, but also on the family level, friends, social. Mm -hmm. Your personal happiness is obviously um, quite important, and that's actually what it comes down to. So um, there's, there's a lot of things that you could say that have a great implication on that. And uh, to be fair, it all comes down to prioritizing. Mm-hmm. So um, the first thing I'm going to do, um, if we've identified that actually the stress levels are one of the biggest um, issues at the moment in my client's life, lives, we kind of look at, okay, what are their priorities? And we make mm-hmm. a big mind map. We get it all out there. So that actually creates a lot of clarity. And mm-hmm. Depends on my clients. They sometimes like to do it themselves. They have it visually, or I do it for them, or we kind of do it together. So it really depends on their preferences because everybody has their own approach. So it, mm-hmm. it's up to the client because I'm not really going to tell them. This is the beauty about coaching. I'm not telling them what to do because in the end, you get told by people every day, this is what I think you should do. But actually, it comes down to what you think works for you. But just me helping them figuring out what that is is always a little bit tricky uh, Mm -hmm. for them to do alone. So that's where I come in and I kind of set the guidelines. Okay, we're going to prioritize here. Going to set out what do you actually want in life? 
what what makes what's important to you and then we have it all out there normal things are family work and personal life you know and then they sometimes sometimes sport or sometimes diet and it, it will get all all in one you want to cover all areas so um then we kind of see which one is most important because obviously the financial factor is a very big important as well, importance as well in their lives but not necessarily because they want it to be but because that's the kind of life that they want to live right mm -hmm. i'm not i'm not, not going to tell my clients okay just quit your job and take a holiday all year <laughs> but you can that would be can, nice that would be nice <laughs> Um, but and, and yeah. I can say my coach told me to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just kind of trying to get the idea there that you can be working, but also have the right mindset to enjoy what you're doing. And um, mm -hmm. when you kind of have the clarity on what it is that you want to have in life and what you want to devote your time, because it's also time management, right? That's another point, mm -hmm. which is very, very important to consider that you make sure that you give yourself enough time and even everything can be planned out you still feel that your head is somewhere else mm -hmm. and that's the trick and um actually i have i have some free material it's called a three steps to less stress mm -hmm. uh where i ha where i give three brief steps and um, I don't want to give away all of them, but I'll make the link available, which is quite interesting. And you can watch it in your own time. Um, mm -hmm. And it, The video is literally four minutes, four to five minutes um, with okay. the intro. So that's definitely something you can watch when you're sitting in an Uber going to work or wherever you want to go and just mm -hmm. have that four minutes. And that will actually create a great shift because you are more conscious about the things that are actually available to you. Right. Yeah. Where can people find those videos? So I have my website. It's um, www.jasminemanke.com. And uh, there's some links to that. I have some external pages also. I have a WordPress going on with some blog posts. Um, but they're, they're pretty much linked. It's like a little um, column which says free resources. And then you can just sign in and then um, you can enter your emails and you'll have them sent to you. So um, there, my emails and my resources are really designed for people who don't have so much time and cannot watch hour long mm -hmm. explanations. And cause I mean, who would not love to, but obviously we have to prioritize. <laughs> right. Yeah. And if I'm stressed because I don't have enough time in my life, right. Sitting down for an hour video is going to stress me even more. <laughs> exactly. So that's, so that's yeah. not gonna, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's good. Have you noticed, though, as time is, is going on, are, are people getting stressed over different things? Or do you see kind of a, a universal stressor in, in people? I actually think the universal, I mean, obviously, there is different reasons. I mean, they have different lifestyles, they have different things. But if mm -hmm. you would kind of see it as an overview, there's like a lot of why, 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 why? And then there's one X and the, the X would be the overall chapters in their life where they say they want to give enough time for work, but also balance it out for family and balance it out. So those, it always kind of comes back to those three factors. And actually one of the main factors is not giving yourself the time that you actually need to perform and to make other people happy. Mm -hmm. So, the thing is, if you would have given yourself that one hour coaching a week, sit yourself down and just, because my coaching is also on the telephone, so it is not even necessary for you to travel anywhere and okay. you, don't get, you don't get distracted by life. You don't truly really just listen to your inner voice and my voice and then you just connect and you can do the work much quicker because it's more effective. Mm -hmm. And you can literally just go to a place where you feel comfortable. You feel that you can really talk and say your actual true full thoughts because you don't really, you're not really honest about what you actually want because you're scared of other people's expectations. Mm. And that could bring on a lot of stress. Exactly. Cause you say to your mom or your family, you're like, yeah, yeah, of course like that because you, you kind of, that's what they expect from you. Not in a, not in a mm -hmm. mean way or in a horrible way, but it's just, that's life, right? Mm -hmm. like you, you do it because you love them. 
because you don't want to hurt their feelings. If you don't feel so well, you're not going to call your mom, ask you how you're doing. You're saying, oh my God, I feel so horrible. And then you're scared because your mom's going to worry about you and you don't want to do, that's just an example, for example. Right, right. You know, so, mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the coaching is really relieving because you can say, actually, what, what do I actually want truthfully? And there's right. no judgment. I'm not going to say, oh, that's good. That's bad. No, because it's not about me. It's about the client to really get out what it is that they want to mm -hmm. achieve for themselves. So I can sometimes find with my clients that 15 minutes bath a week that they always want to do and never get around doing mm -hmm. that time to recharge. It's, it's so, I don't know, underestimated the power they have the next day or the next hour, mm -hmm. you know, because you did give yourself that 15 minutes just for yourself. Yep. And um, the fact that they, that they don't focus on other things at the same time just strengthens their concentration and their kind of stress levels because they're more relaxed. They, mm -hmm. they did take that time to just recharge a little bit. So are you saying then that self care is important? Yes, that definitely. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that's what it all comes down to because if you're happy with yourself, you can make others happy. Mm -hmm. Not only work, fam not only family, but also in work life because you're more clear on what it is that you actually want. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I figured the answer to that because, you know, the, that is something that, you know, I hear a lot of people talk about, you know, that need for self-care. And, you know, I, I've, you know, put that out there too and written about it and all, but it, it seems you know, professionals and counselors and coaches, we, we can all talk about the need for our own self-care. We tell our clients to do self-care. Is anybody really doing self-care? That's exactly, that's the thing. Like I can talk about it. I will tell people, but obviously they underestimate it and they don't do it. And they're like, yeah, 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 I'm aware of this. But then kind of really doing it. And that's, that's, that's what I mean with not telling my clients. That's what coaching is. So you, obviously we tell our clients, what do you want to do for you? I'm not going to tell them, take that 15 minute, minute bath. It works for me. For some other people, they would be like, that's not what I want to do. I hate taking baths. <laughs> you might, I don't know what they want to do, read a book or anything. I mean, it's their life. But if mm -hmm. they figure it out for themselves and they set the goals for themselves, that's where the shifts happen. Because right. then, they, then they kind of embrace the fact they're like, look, this is, this is not going anywhere. I'm not, I'm not getting less stressed. I'm just on that hamster wheel. You, you start over every day, Monday, same Monday again. I mean, who doesn't feel like they keep reliving the Monday that they did last week and on yeah. and just continuing with that. But obviously there has to be made a stop, not a whole, okay, we're just going to cut up the hamster wheel, but we kind of, maybe put some flowers in the hamster wheel or some, you know, because you ultimately mm -hmm. design your kind of hamster wheel because <laughs> you decide what you want to do. You keep moving forward because that's not in our control, which is another mm -hmm. big thing. Um, control. We could get back to that later, but yeah, it's just about mm -hmm. designing what you want to do and you might love your job, but you kind of lost the touch in your motivation from the beginning from what it was that made you so successful and your visions and your ambition and just, yes, this is amazing. Now you're at the top and then you only see the to-do lists instead of actually loving the moment, like loving this and just actually stepping back and being like, Oh my God, this meeting was very good. I'm happy with myself. Mm -hmm. and just as you go along that ladder or life in general, the to-do lists, you kind of take a little, step between the to-do list and just appreciate what you've just done. Right. And, and I like what you're saying with, you know, decorate the hamster wheel and, and yeah. you know, we're taking this analogy into a lot more <laughs> areas. Yes. Yes. But um, I, I think, you know, my question would be as much as I love the idea, what do I do to motivate myself to decorate the hamster wheel? You know, it, like I, I'm running and running and running on this wheel mm -hmm. and, 
you know, I hear you say, all right, decorate the hamster wheel, you know, do something for you. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, cool, wonderful idea, but I'm still running on this wheel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What am I going to need to, like, stop for a moment to decorate it, <laughs> you know, to, yeah. to make it my own? Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's where a lot of people get stuck is, you know, that they love the ideas. Of course. But actually, uh, yeah. How, how do I do this? <laughs> yes. So the difference between a wish and a goal is putting a date to it. Mm -hmm. So you have a target and you say, mm -hmm. I'm going to start now. Like if you really want it, that's, the, that's another thing. You could be telling this to people and they're like, yeah, this is nice, but they're not as inclined to do it because they don't feel that they really need it or they might not, they might leave it to last minute until they are actually completely burned out and they just really, they need, they need to do it. They don't want to do it. They need to do it. So actually stopping for a little bit for like half an hour and I mean, you can do this right now or not even half an hour, let's say five minutes. Um, you can, you can take a piece of paper and just write down what is making happy, what is it making you happy at the moment? Just like top three lists. You, you could do that. I don't know, once a week, wherever you feel comfortable with, and you just kind of see what makes you happy in life at the moment. And you create more of that. That's, that's as simple as it is. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just a little small trick that you can do. Because obviously mm -hmm. it's different than having one hour um, a week or fortnight focusing on what you want, where you go right. in depth explaining why do you want this? Do you actually want this because you want this? Or do you want this because other people want this and you think you want this? This might be exactly. a little bit confusing, but it is, it is true. You might think you want things or you might know that this is what you want, but only because you're in the forest with all the trees, <laughs> you only see trees. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I've known a number of people in, in situations like that, that, you know, so many people have told them you would be good at this or, you know, this is kind of your calling in life. Yeah. And you end up doing it, and, and it's like, like, this isn't for me, but everyone's telling me it is, so it must be my problem. You know, so yeah. I'm doing something wrong, because how can everyone else be wrong, you know, be wrong? So there's your stress and, and all that. But, you know, so I, I, what I'm hearing you saying then is, well, you, you've still got to focus in on what's important to you and, and what makes it work for you. I can give you a good example for that. So I've been growing up thinking I'm going to do real estate and investments. Mm -hmm. And I was actually working, um, I, was, I was studying international business with French and Spanish. I'm German, so I also speak German, English. And uh, my grandma's Romanian, so I also speak Romanian. So I love languages, okay. speak five yeah. languages, which is great. Um, but the more I was studying the languages bit related, I was like, okay, I love it, but I'm not going to work in it. So I, I enjoy talking to people. But I'm not, I'm not going to, this is not my path of being a translator or anything that be related, focused solely right. on languages. Same with international business, which is great. I love it. It was interesting. I was working in real estate for a couple of years and um, asset management, um, a little bit legal implications and all the corporate world stuff, which is great. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed that. And I, and I have the qualifications. I have the skills. But where I really started to shine with the coaching. Mm. When people ask me, they're like, okay, so what do you do? And I can say I make people happy, which makes me so happy, mm -hmm. which is ultimately more powerful um, in life when you're actually really happy what you're doing. You, you right. can reach a different level of motiv motivation and goals and just dreams and everything mm -hmm. about that. So also for people, if it's not necessarily only um, business related, they might find hmm, I might be focusing on this kind of project more because that's what I love. And that's actually what I started working for. How did I get down the river with the flow in that direction? Right. Because I actually wanted to go to this island and stop mm -hmm. there. And that's where I wanted to build my beautiful business dream. Um, and the good thing is because I work with people who are very successful already. So they actually have the choice to do it. I mean, there is, there's a choice in everything because you work mm -hmm. for your, you work for your, you work for your dreams to make them goals. And then no matter which position you're at, you can still take a step and just see the whole picture. 
Mm -hmm. And um, that's what's with the, what do I actually like? The top three list, just small things. It could be a tiny thing. It could be having breakfast with my family this morning, um, taking a shower, going for a jog, or mm -hmm. I don't know, anything that you enjoy in that day and you think it, and then you can really appreciate it more. You can say, okay, so maybe I'm going to try and actually do three days breakfast with my family. Um, because that gave me so much energy today because it was so right. beautiful to see my son have his, I don't know, breakfast cereals. And I had an <laughs> amazing time laughing with my wife or husband or whoever. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, or friend. Right, right. So it, it sounds like what you're saying is it's not so much following what even your skill set may be, but it's following what your happiness is leading you toward. You know, yeah. I'm sure in the international business world, you probably would have been very successful, especially with your, you know, uh, love of languages and your ability to speak so many, mm -hmm. but go with, with the happiness. Yeah. I mean, in the end, I don't feel like, because first of all, I don't believe in the saying there is, um, there's something, for, there's no such thing as something for nothing. Mm -hmm. So there, there just simply isn't. And right. um, because I still use my international business skills because I do work in a corporate world um, and my languages is amazing because I can just offer my coaching in more languages. Oh, exactly. Uh, connecting to more people and traveling is amazing. I love traveling. So mm -hmm. I really think that that is something um, that I'm doing um, already. I'm, I'm still using all of those skills just in a right. different way. You adapt the skills. Because um, I wouldn't say someone who works in corporate, corporate life completely changed their um, journey of a cor corporation or anything that they want. Just um, they might be happy where they are. Just kind of move. Sorry, it's a bit windy. Move their eyes set from here to here. They're not just seeing like this, but actually right. looking a bit more. Wow, oh, I didn't notice this. This is amazing. Like mm -hmm. all of the things that are possible to you. Right. So, we yeah, we, we don't want to stay that we're focused. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Because yes. I think a lot of people are stuck in, in those jobs that, you know, it's not doing much for them. Yeah. They're good at it, you know. Yeah. And, and, you know, so it's like, well, I'm going to stay stuck because, well, I'm good at what I'm doing, so mm -hmm. I might as well keep doing it. But that's not my passion. That's not where I'm motivated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's exactly what it is you have an okay life like it's, no, it's let's say good let's say good life mm -hmm. have a good life and you're overall okay like it's all going well and it's how about this like amazing life like really fulfilled and like wow this is like on fire i love this i'm doing this mm -hmm. i'm because it is possible to you because i mean it could be literally having more sleep relaxing more just giving right. yourself that time and be like, look, actually, I don't feel like going out with these people for that on Thursday night. I'm just going to stay in bed and just relax and just process and just be, literally, just be. And then, and then we can reschedule that. We can just be like, look, let's, um, let's do it next week. Let's, you know? Right. So it's not that. And, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And, 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 oh, no. Uh, I... I love the stuff that you're saying because they're very practical and easy, you know, in the sense of, well, yeah, stay in bed, you know, for part of a day or, you know, whatever, because that's what you need and, you know, do what, you know, to do the self care, take care of, you know, the, the inner you. Um, if you're working though with somebody who's more of the type A person who is always on the go, and you know, they can say, well, if I stay in bed, I'm wasting my time. You know, yeah. if I stay in bed, I'm procrastinating. If I, you know, take that bath mm -hmm. or take, you know, I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not being productive. If I'm not being productive, then yes. Well, now, how would you deal with, you know, because yeah. and I even would catch myself at, at some time saying, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, well, I got so much to do. I'm, I, I just can't. I know I need to, but I can't. I, I know it is, it is a circle, which does sound like the hamster wheel to me again. <laughs> and, um, I'll go back to that hamster. <laughs> no, no, I, I work with a lot of people who feel guilty taking time for themselves. Mm -hmm. But 
honestly, what are you living for in life? What can you do if you don't, you're not connected with yourself, you know? You, you just, life is running by, but have you actually lived it? You see? Because, I mean, what is, what is this all about if you're not actually happy with what you're doing? And even small things, it doesn't need to be a whole evening, it can be 10 minutes nap if you need that. And give yourself that time. And um, I mean, this was a suggestion just because we're on the podcast. But if I have the client, they would say, look, I just really wanted to five minutes call my, my friend. She, she makes me feel really good. Do that. Mm -hmm. Give yeah. yourself that time. It's stopping you. Yeah, because the five minutes thinking about it, should I do this? Do I feel bad about this? Can I do this? Do I, can I afford to do this? Um, even those five minutes thinking about it, thinking about it all day and actually just taking the five minutes. I always ask my, ask my clients, what do you really want? Then when we've kind of actually probably spoken about it at least half an hour, finding out what it is truly, then we find out how can you fit it in your schedule? And then we find out what, like, what, it, what would happen if you would give up those five minutes? What's the worst that can happen? Like I always contemplate because I'm very results orientated. Because I want my clients to have something tangible. Because, I mean, coaching is something tangible because you get results out of it. You really get life-changing results over a long period of time. So minimum of 90 days. Um, but then you see the real shifts. And then it's not necessarily call in every week. But just kind of giving one hour, you get a feeling of having four more hours. If you see what I mean. So ultimately, just spending that one hour for you, you gain so much more happiness. And I mean, in all areas of your life, it will exceed. Like it will, mm -hmm. yeah, it will be more positive because you fit it the way you want it and you paint it. Right. Yeah. When you ask people, you know, what, what is it that you want? You know, what are you seeking? You know, the, those questions. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing a common thread? Is there something overall that, that people are leaning toward or is it just all over the board? Mm, I don't think there's one specific thing uh, that people want to achieve because people are different. Everybody has a different opinion. Right. Pro probably have a completely different idea of a Thursday afternoon or we had Thursday, let's say Tuesday afternoon or Sunday morning than I would which is great because everybody is allowed to do their own thing. But I think ultimately um, people try to control things a lot in life because they feel like this octopus, they have to hold all of the things. And if they don't, if they mm -hmm. let go of one thing, everything is going to fall down and it's going to cause this massive things like stress again. And um, I just think that actually being able to see that you can control not like you can't control everything and just letting that go is very powerful because the things that you can control these are the things you should be thinking about and focusing on not thinking about the problems but thinking about the solutions instead so something happens and then you decide you put a label on it you say look this is good this is bad actually it just is you kind of have your own perception. Like, yep. it doesn't matter what it is. And I know there's sad things happening, but it is still, in each way, it's an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to achieve something. And um, I mean, on little things, like for example, oh, my assistant messed up the meeting schedule. I don't know. Take it as a time to actually get to know your partner, get, like, get to know them. Do, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe you'd have an op awesome opportunity, great idea that you just kind of feel. I mean, it is your mindset, you know, and this might actually lead you to another idea if that didn't work out. Because ultimately, you just kind of have to let go of things that you can't control because you can't control them. So there's nothing you can do about it. And you just waste the time thinking about the problem when you could be thinking about something positive instead. And you create more of that what you want. Mm -hmm. So that's why I didn't ask people to write down the things that they don't like, like three things that they want to change. Right. But 
I ask them to write down things that they do want and that's what we're going to build on. And then they can write down what they want to achieve instead of going backwards, which is therapy mm -hmm. for focusing on the problem. No, right. focus on what you want because that's what we want to get more of. This is what we mm -hmm. want to expand. And, and in seeking what you want and, and what you want to expand in life is what you're then saying is now let's look into the solutions of what do we do to get there? You know, and exactly. um, yeah, I, I've for many years used a, a variation of what you're saying, you know, is mm -hmm. I, I used to say to my clients and even my staff when I had them, you know, that there are, are no problems, only solutions, mm -hmm. you know, because it is in, in all, you know, how you look at it, you know, the, yeah. do you focus is in on the problem, then there's only problems. You know, are you focused on the solution, then there's only solutions. Yes. Um, and uh, I know sometimes they hated me for, <laughs> for that comment, you know. <laughs> but uh, but, but I, I do think there's truth in it. You know, there's some sarcasm, but I think there's truth in it. <laughs> I know. It's like that movie that you always kind of heard about, but because you heard about it so many times and people which you think you wouldn't relate, then you actually go down watching it. I'm like, oh my God, this music movie is really good. I always kind of thought it's not that good because you kind of just saw the surface of it or just saw the title. Mm -hmm. But actually watching the movie, it was good. So, mm -hmm. um, or it was bad, which I think, or you didn't like it. Let's say there are no things that are good or bad, but you didn't like it, which you choose not to like, and that's fine. And then you yeah. realize, okay, I'm not going to watch that kind of movie again. Okay, never mind. Next time, choose a different one. No problem. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the worst that can happen, <laughs> you know? So, so it seems from all of this that we've been talking about, it, it, it seems to me that you, you focus heavily on the fact that you always have a choice in life. Yes. Would that be a truth? That is, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That's, that's definitely one of the things that I do. Because like you just said, I can say it all day long, which I'm not, I'm not going to tell my clients, yeah, you always have a choice, you always have a choice. But my questions are results orientated for right. the fact that I ask them, what's another perspective you could have? Like, what would a person with a complete different opinion do about this? Mm -hmm. And then we explore. You, you have to change something to change. Right. Because you can't keep going the same way if you want something different. So mm -hmm. you, you, you make changes and those are going to be small changes because we don't want to let the whole Jenga <laughs> steps <laughs> fall down and just make a big change. Now we take it gradually, but we make sure that is a long-term change that you're happy with. Right. People associate change with something negative. The unknown is always a bit scary because they're mm -hmm. like, Oh, I don't know what's going to happen but you have the choice for what's going to happen. So right. that's a positive change. That's something you want to change. Yeah. yeah I've, I've worked with a number of people that, you know, when we talk about change and, you know, even start kind of formulating, well, if you make this change, here's what's going to happen in your life. And, and they can admit, Hey, that looks positive. That's wonderful, but it's still the unknown. So I'm just going to stay where I am. Yes which is fine, but that's what I mean. Are you okay with that or are you really happy with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and, and, and I like that because what I'm also hearing then is, you know, where does that personal responsibility come into? You know, yeah. that, you know, are we stressed because I'm choosing to be stressed? Are we stressed because of external things? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can give you a nice example for that. You're not gonna want some <laughs> the fire brigade to come in your house and be like, all right, so let's just evaluate the problem here. What's going on? Solutions focus. No, you want them to be stressed and get that fire out. So mm -hmm. you can use it in a positive way, you know? <laughs> so it is, it is always the way you put it because you can use that stress to achieve a goal quicker. Fine, let's do it, but not, let's not do it every day because that you ultimately you're not happy with that. But you just have the choice of actually thinking – this is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to use it for. Okay, I'm going to be a bit on fast forward today because I need to get the sun mm -hmm. so that I tomorrow can go home for my daughter's birthday party earlier. Right. But that's a conscious choice. Right. But ultimately, so it, yeah. 
You're happier. Yeah, we keep coming back to choice. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is a good thing. I, I'm, I, I'm in total agreement. I, you know, because I, I think you know people in general get more stressed when they feel they're out of choices. You know, and, and if we can keep encouraging them that no, you always have some choices. Now you may not like the choices you may have, but you always have choices. Yeah. You know, and then start to look at which one is, is going to eventually lead you into the way that, you know, you, you really want to go or need to go. Um, so all of these, I, I think, are, are very practical tips, really good things on stress. And a, a question that pops in, into my mind would be then, so you must be an extremely stress-free person always, all the time. Oh, uh, well, I say that... I do kind of tend to when there is a lot of stress and I, I kind of ask myself, is it really like, if I, if I do get back into the stress and I'm mm -hmm. like, actually, it's, it's fine. I have 20 minutes to do this and just the thought process. Okay, so how am I going to do this? Look at that and just get it done. And then I might be working quicker, but I'm not stressed because I'm still kind of balanced. I'm just like, okay, so this is what I have to do. This, this, this. Okay, fine. I'm going to do this. If I don't have time, I'll do it five minutes then, or I'll do it, I'll finish it five minutes on the way there, or whatever, because mm -hmm. you do have it. <laughs> I know I've said this before, but that is the way, because you do prioritize, or you say, okay, so I was going to do this and that, but do I really need to do this today, or can I leave it for another day? Like, how, how much is it going to affect my ultimate goal if I leave that for, I don't know, two hours later, or tomorrow mm -hmm. or I do tend to get things done though because um my resolution this year was actually when I had the thought I do it straight away mm -hmm. which is which was good yeah has that been working yeah it has I I like think to call someone and then you kind of put it off no I call them straight away because how long is it going to take one minute maximum mm -hmm. yeah it's going to take longer than that to find a time to plan for when you were going to do it. <laughs> exactly, exactly, because you put it off and then you have the thought process of thinking about doing it. And, you know, it pops up, do it, done. Mm -hmm. It'll get back to me in time. Or just ask Siri to send a text. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> Say those thoughts out loud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and that's where, you know, a lot of people talk about technology is, you know, the, this evil thing that has created stress in our lives and, yes. you know, without necessarily going into that debate. But I, I think in some ways that we can take that technology and use it to our benefit. Yeah. And it might be the stress reliever, you know, like you're saying things like, you know, Siri and, and you know, things like that, that, yes. that are automating some of these things for us. Um, yeah. And maybe it's going to enable us to have some more time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it depends how you use it. It's, mm -hmm. obviously, it's obviously perfectly understandable that everybody has a lot and fair share to juggle. So everybody has the things that they want to do and need to do because that's what they want to do ultimately. Yeah. But just um, clarifying what it is that they actually want, they're probably, they'd probably be really surprised how much of the things they can actually eliminate out of their life that are not necessary and they're not serving them. They might have been serving them in the past, but they don't, they don't do anymore. And it just kind of let it go. It yeah. might hurt at first, but then in the end it, it's better for them. It's beneficial. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Well, yeah, you know, we, we age and we change and, you know, as we yeah. do, do that. Yeah. Things that used to work for us at a different mm -hmm. time period in our lives may not necessarily work for us. So why do we hold on to it? Mm -hmm. Instead of changing and, yeah. You know, doing something different to fit where we are today. Mm -hmm. And the plus on that, it actually leaves room for something new that you might enjoy more. Mm -hmm. So you just change. exchange. Yeah. yeah then you're <laughs> yeah. happy. <laughs> exactly exactly that is yeah. that is so true though yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so as we're looking up to starting to wrap up all that we've been talking about which uh, again i think there's a lot of good practical stuff in here um mm -hmm. is there anything that we haven't 
covered yet or, or talked about that you think the audience really needs to know when it comes to stress and, and the hamster wheel or you think we've covered it? Well, I mean, just to sum it up a little bit, um, it, is, it is very important to have clarity. Clarity in everything. So not even the choice that comes after clarity because really knowing what it is that works for you. Mm -hmm. I think that is the key to being more relaxed in any sense. Even the small things that you might not think that are that big to you, the fact that, they, that you do think about them more than once or twice, they are mm -hmm. bothering you. Not to a great extent, but yeah, so it's just clarity. Okay. I, think I would say that is a very important factor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And choice. Yes, because that comes after, because you shouldn't be scared to say, but I have to do this. This is what I need to do. All of this has to be in there. Just sit back and say, clarity, what do I want? And then when you know what you want, then you can make the choice and choose the right thing for you. Yeah. There's no right or wrong for each person. They define it themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, they should, they should do it. <laughs> be and, and I think that in and of itself must be very freeing for most people. Oh, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd be surprised. People think they know exactly what they want and then do a lot of visioning as well. And then we mm -hmm. kind of get out of the get out of the practical brain into the more creative side mm -hmm. where you really mm -hmm. indulge and see, oh, my God, this is this is what I need. <laughs> because there's so much distraction. You don't know that. Yeah. And you think it's such an easy thing, but so powerful actually yeah yeah totally agree well that this has been awesome in, in learning all of the stuff about stress and how to get rid of the stress um can, can you mention again to people what's the best way uh, for people to get a hold of you and either to learn more or even you know to yeah. book some uh, life coaching Yes, definitely. So um, my website is, is pretty functional. So there's a lot of things on there. There's a lot of free material as well. If people don't, if they want to get in touch more and just see what's going on and does this benefit me? Will this serve me? Am I ready for coaching? Uh, so it's uh, jasminemanke.com. We can put the link. Uh, J-A-S-M-I-N-M-A-N-K-E.com. I think there's a jingle in there somewhere. <laughs> and and I have I have a Facebook page as well where I like to kind of get some inspirational things you know because we do tend to go on Facebook all of the time I also do post on LinkedIn a bit because it is nice to kind of scroll through and see some positive spark in there which could yeah. change your mindset even if only for a short period of time but just lift the spirit for a bit and um, I offer 45 minutes um, free coaching it's an introduction session um for people who would like to get to know me and i work with um selected clients which i think that they really because i need people that are 100 percent engaged because that's mm -hmm. that's where the changes are going to be made so who are ready for this and they really want to they want to make a change in their life and um people might come to me and they don't know what they want and they're just like yeah i just kind of I just want to see what does this bring for me? Like they don't have specific goals, mm -hmm. which I think sometimes is even more powerful because then you really tap into it and then they really know and they're like, aha, uh -huh. like, wow. Right. Yeah. Some people have goals, which is good as well. And then um, we really work through that and see where it is. And then, yeah, the, the overall changes. Mm -hmm. but, um, I think uh, the best way to contact me is uh, through my uh, website. There um, is a book session um, button directly on the page. You can That's sign true. in to my free resources. Um, I have a, a list where I like to send out some material um, that, can be, that can be beneficial for them. And then you can choose whether you like to view it or not, or you might want to refer it, or you say, oh, this is good for my friend. Oh, this is good for this person. Right. So yeah, it's... Um, it's really easy going and um, I do have a lot of time and I have an automated system um, Calendly where you can just uh, book a session straight away. Mm -hmm. You can just check your timer and set, check my timer and just book it. So it's not all of the con communication um, 
where you say, oh, when is good for you? It's literally, you can just see the times and dates and you just right. look in. And then um, you can just cross in and say what mode of uh, communication you'd like to have. Phone, Skype, WhatsApp call, mm. in person. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we definitely don't want to make the process of getting out of stress stressful. Exactly. <laughs> Big fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> totally agree. Totally agree. Um, well, again, thank you very much. The, this, this has been a awesome time and you know great to have this opportunity to speak with you and and you know to get to know you a bit better in that but also you. you know to really learn these practical uh tips on stress and um you know and i'm sure uh for everyone out there who's watching listening um you know see what you can do and you know if you are going to try something that relieves your stress uh you know let uh let Jasmine and I know, you know, post on our social media on, on Facebook and, you know, what, what kind of works for you as far as, uh, you know, getting rid of your stress. And, and that would be very interesting to you know, maybe form a, a community and, uh, you know, le letting each other know what, what works for each other. And, you know, we, we yes. can try different things. So, well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, too. Have a great day. Right. You, too. For listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.